Well, this is Mark from Productive Computing. Thanks for joining me on this video. Today we're talking about FileMaker Server and the installation of OpenJDK. If this is something that you are currently in the middle of, you're trying to install FileMaker Server, you've turned on the web publishing engine and you're getting interesting messages and you're all confused about what's going on, this video is for you. So let's dive in and see what the situation is. First of all, there are changes to Java in FileMaker Server 18.0.2. Let me read those for you. Beginning February 2019, Oracle has discontinued public support of Java 8 for business, commercial, or production use. Due to the recent Java licensing changes, FileMaker Server 18.0.2 no longer distributes Java runtime environment, which is needed for custom web publishing and FileMaker WebDirect. Due to this change, you'll need to select one of the following options. So FileMaker Server for the longest time has been bundled complete with all the components necessary to run web publishing. That is no longer the case. Because of licensing issues directly from Oracle, who is now in charge of this particular situation, uh, FileMaker no longer bundles the Java runtime engine with FileMaker Server. So you're on your own to get it, acquire it, and insert it into the FileMaker admin console based on this instruction set. Now this instruction set will be linked below this video so you can follow along and you can get to the other links to read more about the Oracle offering as well as the free version which is called OpenJDK 8. That free version is also available for you so it doesn't necessarily mean you'll have to pay for something for this install but you'll want to read very closely because each one of these installs comes with certain licensing and restrictions so you want to be sure that you're uh, legally correct to use what you decide to install. This video only talks about the OpenJDK version, the free version, and that's what we're focusing on here. So that's option two, which is install OpenJDK. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to install FileMaker Server. Preferably, uh, we're currently, as of this video, we're at version 18.0.3. It's the current version of FileMaker Server. I'm sure there'll be newer ones in the future, and it's unclear if future versions of FileMaker Server will address this issue in another way, or if we'll still be in a situation where we have to install our own Java runtime engine. But in either case, you'll want to follow the instructions after you turn on Web Publishing Engine in the admin console, you'll be greeted with a dialog box. It'll look something like this. That dialog box will instruct you to go and pick option one or two to either install OpenJDK or choose the Oracle option. I'm going to pick the use OpenJDK version. I can push OK. Then I get the second dialog, which gives me a brief instruction list and a link to go to Adopt OpenJDK, which is where I can actually download this OpenJDK, also known as Java Development Kit. So I'm going to be choosing OpenJDK 8 LTS and Hotspot JVM. Those are the things I need to pay attention to because this next page will have a lot of choices. Then I will download it and return back to this screen. So for now, let's go right to the website that they link us to. And we can see here, at least according to the timing of this video, OpenJDK 8 LTS is the one that's pre-selected. In fact, so is Hotspot JVM. Now, when I first loaded this page, I was using Internet Explorer, and I didn't have much luck having the different versions draw below. So I switched over to the Safari browser on my Macintosh. And here we have it loading right away. I don't know if it's browser related, most likely it is. So once you get to this screen, you wanna pick the one that's appropriate for the operating system that you're working with. In this case, we are working with a Windows machine or Windows server, I should say. So we can actually define it with these filters here. I can pick Windows and I can pick 64-bit. And there it shows me Windows 2008 R2 or later. Then we have the various flavors here. And if you recall from the previous screen, we want to use the JDK version. So there's two JDKs and two JREs. We want the JDK version, and we want not the MSI, because that's a full-blown installer that won't work with the FileMaker server. You want the .zip version. So this is the one you want to download for this situation. And we'll download that now. And I'll paste this zip file onto the desktop of the Windows server. Okay, now that file here, the zip file is located on my desktop. So I should now at this point be able to browse for it right here on the FileMaker server admin console. Browse for that zip file, click open. It has accepted it, at least in this window, and then click upload file. The file is uploading, do not close or refresh this page. Let's see what happens. Use Java runtime environment. OpenJDK has been uploaded to FileMaker Server. Restart FileMaker Server for the changes to take effect. So for good measure, I will restart the entire server. That will restart 
FileMaker server, but it also restarts the entire computer, which is good in that you'll be able to test that if you restart FileMaker server in its entirety, you'll be assured that the FileMaker server and the web publishing engine work correctly even after a restart. So we'll come back when that restart is complete. Okay, the server just restarted. So let's go to the admin console and see what we have here. We'll go to connectors. And we can see here that the web publishing engine is in fact running. Now let's go ahead and turn on the FileMaker WebDirect. And that's how you successfully get your FileMaker server 18 or beyond running with OpenJDK. All right, so that's that. Now if you want, this lesson is actually available at Productive Computing University. It's included in our Install SSL Certificate course, which is available, like I said, at ProductiveComputingUniversity.com. And this lesson, along with many others re regarding SSL installation, server installation, and things like that are all included in that course. But we figured we'd put this out here on uh, for free on YouTube so that people who stumble upon this issue can see in a visual way a little bit more what to do and what to expect and why this change is happening and what's going on. Because if you have been working with FileMaker for as long as I have, something new like this can really put a wrinkle in things uh, if you don't know the full story. But once you do know the full story, the actual workaround is quite easy, straightforward, and not a big deal. It's getting this information out there that's important. Thanks for joining us on this video. Feel free to subscribe for more like it, and we'll talk to you soon on the next one.